Welcome everybody, Stuart Cohen here. It's time for the May 9th episode of the Ask Stuart Hour, and I might be doing most of the talking today if that's okay, but I don't want to because this is for you, about you. We already have our first question posted, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, so if you have an issue, an anecdote, an opportunity, a situation, bring it. Let's see if we get it resolved, give you some great ideas, and uh, I, my goal too is to start, begin to share with you some of my experiences about my river cruise. Welcome everybody, I'm so glad that you're here, everyone's still filing in, so cool as you come in, just check in, let me know you can see me and hear me, great, we have a bunch of brand new boot campers in, welcome, as you can see we start on time, and I will end on time, but I have missed you guys, but I've been thinking about you all, the whole group process. You know, it's it's sometimes I get asked, well, Stuart, you have a group boot camp. You know, what do you do about groups? We're in the hot seat out here selling. Do you just teach it or have you done it? Well, as most of you know, I've been in the business now, it's 30 years, uh, and I've worked on the supplier side, I've worked on the agency side at World Travel Holdings, and I've worked on the consortium side, the marketing side. So the good news is uh, I've been involved in a lot of groups the highest producing group agencies in the country. I've seen behind the scenes what it's like on the supplier side. I have gone, traveled with groups, and you may, guys may not know this, but early in my career, I, I put together the very first ever Wheel of Fortune cruise on the Norway. Yes. Moment of silence for the Norway. My very, my, who here was ever on the Norway, and who can tell me what the, what the, 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 uh, the original name of the ship was? Do you remember? It had two names. And what, and another question, trivia, what was she used for? Other than a passenger vessel. So in any case, hey Gina, Gina's in the house. So we'll see if anybody has those trivia questions about the Norway. What was another name for her? And also, what else was she used for during a specific time in our in, in the world, in our history? All right, here we go. So I have questions that uh, we got good stuff from Krista to talk about, a great story from Sam. Uh, Dan, I know you and I communicated about surveys and so forth uh, and, and group leaders. We're going to talk about that. But let me, let, let me start off just peppering you with some interesting information about my river cruise. So if you were not aware, I did a partial ship charter of the brand new Amma Christina, which is of course an Amma Waterways cruise. So when I speak here and give you these these anecdotes and these stories, uh, this is the product that I've dealt with. This is my this this was my third Amma Waterways cruise. It was consistent with the other two, entirely consistent. So the great news was that the product delivered what it did the first time, the second time, and now the third time. Kimberly, my wife, it was her second because we did a uh, Danube River cruise for our honeymoon about three and a half years ago and several people on the ship had uh, just a few had all already been also on an AMA before but the majority of our group we were a total of 27 the majority had never been on a river cruise before never so to, to really to sum it up and by the way this was a Rhine River cruise and we also most of us did the pre the pre program two nights in Zurich two nights in Lucerne so at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you it was an A plus plus plus, and really to sum it up best from my mom, she had never she hadn't done uh, uh, an international trip in years because my dad had been ill for so long, and she just didn't travel big. So this was a big trip for her, and she traveled as a single in a single, and she traveled with friends, friends, some friends. Uh, one of the women she traveled with, she they had been friends since they were 11 years old. So she summed it up by list. She, she, she said, so it was perfect. It was perfect. She, she said, and my mom's a worry wart, you know. She said every step of the way, everything was perfect. There was always somebody, Alma explained what was happening, where to be, where to go. There was always somebody there. And everything was on time. She's a stickler like me for being on time. The tour guides, everybody, everything was perfect. You talk about a well-oiled machine, it was perfect. So friends, the first bit of advice is when, if you're going to do a group, make sure you know the brand, you know the supplier, and you know that they deliver perfect because it was perfect. And the second thing I want to share is what, what my biggest fear was. 
See, as as the group leader, I it, it was also my vacation. And if some of you know that, uh, I told when I started to market this, and mind you, I didn't advertise this. I didn't market per se. This was truly a friends and family trip. Because when we got back from our honeymoon, we talked about it, and people were so envious, and we said, "Hey, let's go again, but let's invite friends and family." And I said, "Hey, let me put into practice all the things I teach at boot camp: the pitch perfect, everything, the group launch sequence, everything. I did exactly what I have in boot camp for you, and you can see them all. By the way, they're all on the website, and if you need more links, just let me know." You could see every step of the way what I did. In any case, my biggest fear was actually not taking the risk to do a partial uh, ship uh, charter, which is riskier than a group. But it was when I'm when I'm there, is everybody going to cling to me? And are we all going to do everything together? What are their expectations of me? You know, am I going to be? Am I going to be stressed that everyone is sort of follow the leader and I'm not going to have fun? You know, and and Kimberly, my wife, she always sums it up best. She said, as we were heading over there, she said it best. She said, Stuart, I know you put this together and this and that and planned it out, and right now it's 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 out of your hands. Okay, everything is set up, everything is done, and now it's a responsibility of the hotels, the, the tour directors, and the excursions, AMA, and this kind of stuff. But, but she said this, very important. She said, Stuart, you're not responsible for everyone else's good time. You're not. They're all adults. You're not responsible for their good time. And she was right. Because what happened was everyone sort of formed in their own little, little cohorts or little mini groups. My mom hung out with her group of friends. Kimberly's parents, my, my, my in-laws, they hung out with, with their group of friends. We hung out with our group of friends. I, I went with my friend Pete and Carol, and I've known them since high school. High school. I was at Pete's wedding. and uh, But there were times when we all came together. You know, it just happened. And I made sure to make the rounds, say hello to everybody. But it turned out everybody found their own great time. And, and here's a little hint, friends, so that you don't get burdened with, uh, with, with uh, dealing with everybody's good time when you get there. If you're escorting, which I hope you are, and if you lead your own group, which I sure hope you do, is that I set expectations. Listen to me carefully. I set expectations. Number one, early on, as part of the sales pitch, the group launch sequence, I did a series of information presentations before ever revealing the prices. So everybody knew what it was going to be like, what they were going to get, all the benefits. Now, I don't talk features, the benefits. Don't give me features. Give me the benefit of these things, how I'm going, how I'm going to do it, what I'm going to do. And next, I had information presentations leading up to our departure, too. I answered questions publicly so everybody could see because they were all common questions rather than getting the same questions asked over and over. I published them always. And these information presentations, I also made sure, kept sending out links to, to the, because before we got our document package from AMA, we, we got links to the itinerary and the various tours that were optional. So here's what I did. Here was the secret to success. I said, hey, friends and family. Are you reading through uh, the, the, the itinerary guide? Are you picking out which tours you want to do? So rather than me saying, hey, listen, I don't want to hang out with everybody the whole time because we're going to have different interests, that's what I said. Are you going through the itinerary guide and picking out which tours you like best? And everything fell into place. Everybody did the tours that they wanted to do. And then, then when we all got together on the ship, or some people met up at the airport because we are on the same flight, are you doing this? Are you doing this? Oh, we're going to do it together. And then, of course, there was the, you know, the light walker or the active walker, this kind of stuff, which we're going to talk about. So I just wanted to get that out there. I want to check the, the question box, see if you guys have any questions or comments to see if you'd like me to go down this path and read through some of these big takeaways and go through them with you because I want to make sure this is interactive with you. Okay, so let me go see where we get here. Uh, LaDonna's in the house. Hello. Welcome, LaDonna. By the way, I met some of my boot campers for the first time down at the Travel East Conference. So get this. 
right? I'm away for almost two weeks on this river cruise. I come back on a Saturday, and on Monday morning, super early, I fly down to Orlando because I was a power speaker at the Travel Leaders Network conference. So I had to do four programs there. And thankfully, the jet lag didn't destroy me. I did okay, and it was great. So now I'm back, and, and life is great. Patty says, hello, Patty. Yes, I sailed on the Norway, but not when it was the SS France. Thank you. Answered the trivia question number one. The Norway had been the SS France. Thank you, Patty. Uh, Sam says, love the Norway SS France. Yes, loved its two different color carpets denoting forward and aft. Yeah, it was such a classic ship. You had giant ballrooms, right? You had two walking decks. One was Champ de Lise, and I don't forget what the other one was. Uh, I, I didn't want to go down that subject too hardly, but it was an amazing ship. And, and, and by the way, the ship was used, the ship was used, uh, was commissioned, was taken out of commission, used by the army to transport ships. If I'm not mistaken, she was painted gray, and then they brought her back for a, cu a customer ship. And do you know why? Uh, so, so, you know, warm water cruising sort of died out for a while. Why? Because of the transatlantic, you know, planes. There were there was jet travel. There were planes flying overseas. So why take a ship before ships were used as transportation? Get me from here to there, and then plane travel became affordable and available. So warm water cruising sort of died out, and then it came back. Then it came back. All right. Hans says, wants to know about the trip. Cool. Gina says, I missed you at the conference. My side of the conference ended on Monday. That's right, because they sort of broke out the conference in two different groups. And I spoke on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, sorry, I missed you, Gina. Judy says, missed you all these weeks. Thank you so much. That's very sweet, Judy. Missed you too. Uh, Judy says, did our honeymoon on the Norway in 1985. Uh, went through Hurricane Glory at the time. The Norway ported in Grand Cayman instead of St. Thomas. And you know what? That ship was built to be a transatlantic, was built to be, the Norway was an ocean liner, right, friends? If you guys know ships and study ships, most of the ships today are built to be warm water cruise ships, right? And those were built ocean liners. That's when you have the really, the really uh, deep, oh my God, it sits deep in the water. What's that called? The, the draft. The draft? I think it's a draft. And they have very pointy, Pointy front, so they cut through the water smoother versus the majority of the, uh, the 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 lines today. And yes, you missed Mike as well. I know. All right, so let let me go through some of these, and then I also I'm going to sort of jump around, friends, and I also want to get to some of the questions, issues, and anecdotes that you have. And I know that we already had a question posted, so let me go through a few of these things now. And I think I I already set the stage. And and if I haven't told you that I'm grateful for you, I'm going to tell you that I'm grateful for you that you're here, you're part of boot camp, boot camp has, can, continues growing, and I, I couldn't be happier to be able to talk about a subject that I love and, and, and that you love and that it's the way to go. It's the way to go. And by the way, everybody on the cruise is already asking, where are we going next? Where are we going next? It's going to be an African safari. It's going to be another river cruise. And I'm like, whoa, easy does it there. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I don't know. But... Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So not necessarily in this order. I, I, you know, we could talk about this in a lot more detail in the future. But I'm glad I did a partial ship charter versus a group. Now, a partial ship charter, real quick, uh, means that you're gonna you're gonna get a, a very low rate. You're gonna get a net rate a net rate, which will vary in seasonality. If I had cruised a little earlier, I could have gotten a little better rate. If I cruised in, in the heat of the season, I would have paid more. But I went sort of, uh, you know, shoulder. So, so the temperatures, by the way, were on the cool side, but we did have a warm day. We had one day hit 75, and it was glorious. It was gorgeous. Some days were cold early on, especially in Zurich and Lucerne, but we dressed in layers. I prepared everybody. Layers, 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 layers. And everybody did great. Nobody complained they were cold. And we had a couple people who forgot gloves. Remind people, bring gloves, bring a scarf. My scarf was a savior because I wore a vest most of my days, you know, a vest, uh, and, and, and usually, you know, sweatshirt, you know, something uh, that was a little heavier because I didn't want to bring a heavy coat. But the scarf saved the day for me, and the glove saved the day for me, and the people who forgot gloves end up buying there. So just a tip, make sure... It, when you have the chance of that kind of weather. And we all brought little lightweight rain slickers. We didn't need them. We beat the rain. We beat the rain, friends. Uh, so, so there is more risk with the, with the charter, but here's my tips on that. If you know 
if you're comfortable that you already have a solid base. So if this is a first time group, if you've never done work with them before and they don't have a track record, then then don't do a partial ship charter. But if there's a track record, especially if you've done it and you know you just you know your intuition is telling you we're golden, then investigate a partial ship charter. Okay, I think the minimum with AMA was ten, I took twenty. I didn't sell out. But I was real happy that I did what I did. And the key is that in your in your charter contract, you can give back space by certain deadlines without penalty. But once those dates pass, you're done. You own those staterooms, whether you use them or not, friends. Now, Stuart, what you know what happens with cancellations? I'm going to jump ahead and let you know that with a partial ship charter, okay, I, I made my own. Uh, uh, payment terms and cancellation terms, and I pretty much mirrored them to AMA. So when you do a partial ship charter, people are paying you. They paid me, not AMA. I make up my own cancellation terms and conditions. I have 100% communication with the client because if any client called AMA, and some did, they had asked questions, which is fine. AMA, if they could answer a generic question, they could, but they referred them back to me. So you all you have ultimate control over your group when you do the charter. I sent the manifest to I was responsible for sending the birth dates and the passport information to Alma. That's all me. So you take on more responsibility, but the opportunity for a greater margin is, is there for you because you control total pricing. We had a cancellation 60 days prior. Uh, one of our guests took ill and they had to cancel. Guess what? They had insurance because I, I don't want to say insisted upon it, but it was something that I expected. Now, you guys know, or if you don't know this, hear me loud and clear, and, and I've made this mistake early on. You can never say insurance included. It's illegal to say insurance included. Okay, You have to dance around those words, and you have to show them how much the, the insurance is, and you can get them to opt out, of course. And you can position the pricing with it there, but it can't be that's actually illegal. If you don't believe me, ask your local insurance provider. So what I did was I just assumed everyone was going to buy it. So when I sent out the pricing invoice, I put how much it was going to be for them because, of course, in this case, I used the travel insured, Isaac Simrot's company, and uh, it's ba that was based on uh, the cost of the trip. So once I knew what stateroom they wanted and if they were taking the air, I could tell them exactly how much their insurance per person was, and I built it into the invoice. And I didn't give them the opt-out chance, but some people called and said, you know, we don't want it. I said, okay. We had the discussion. We had the talk about it, and they said, nope. I said, that's okay. All right? And we had one couple who they have uh, annual travel insurance. They didn't need it, but the one couple who canceled had bought our insurance, and they were in a 50% penalty with me. And guess what? As soon as I saw it in writing and it was definite they were canceling, I refunded their 50% immediately. And they were so grateful because the last thing in the world they wanted to worry about was, was medical bills, not being able to pay and because they had situations and issues uh, and problems. Um, I was not going to be a problem, you see, immediately. Okay, so I just want to let you, we could talk, you know, all day long about, about that, and I'm always happy to help you more specifically with charter, but it, it rarely comes up in conversation. But those of you who are good, ambitious group producers, you should consider it, because you could do it with big ships too. You could do a partial ship charter with the big ships too. That's harder. But with the river cruise, to me, it was a lot easier. I've negotiated with the big cruise lines on partial ship and full ship charters. I've done them, yes. And I was a coach to others, uh, another gentleman who does it now. Uh, and I've seen those contracts. They're this thick. But the cruise, the river cruise contract, I didn't need an attorney. I actually understood what it said, what it meant. And I was very, very cautious about the dates. I made sure I gave back the staterooms when they gave me that little breathing room. And the good news was, I remember everyone says, how, how early should I start uh, promoting? And I said, you know, you can start that group launch sequence as early as you want. It can be three years in advance. And you could do it again, group the, do the group launch sequence again. I did it twice. And I brought in a few new guests the second time I did it. But therefore, the earlier you start, 
then when you have to start sending pickers the charter, you're sending big checks, my friend. I brought out some really, really big checks before I had all the money in. So you're putting out a lot of money, friends. You are. But since I started early, I started to get deposit money in. And if you want to know my specific strategy for, because you know you're like, people are going to put up deposits, you know, for two years in advance, and they did. Because you know what I did? I made that four hundred dollar per person deposit refundable, up for for months, fully refundable for months in advance. So people felt more comfortable saying, "Geez, if I change my mind, I get my money back up till this date." And that date was actually when the next deposit was due. I did a two deposit system. First deposit fully refundable for months. Second deposit, that's when the first deposit was not refundable and we, we the penalty period started and of course final payment which I tried to uh, mirror the uh, the AMA program. Okay, uh, uh, th so uh, this is in no particular order but I wanted to plan a couple of special events and you're probably thinking, Stuart, how could you do something special on a river cruise because everything is included? Well, guess what? I did. I had two events planned and one of them never happened. The second night in Zurich, I wanted to just invite everybody to go to a local bar, local pub, which I had not picked out in advance, uh, which was, ended up being a good thing because I almost did it at the hotel. By the way, the hotels were awesome. City center, beautiful, magnificent, awesome. Um, and everyone was so doing things, exploring. I just said, you know what, Kimberly, I said, we're not, we're not going to do it. And guess what? Nobody asked for it. Nobody remembered it. I mean, was out exploring. I think it would have been a drag if I had done it. So keep that in mind. Sometimes uh, the, your best intentions are not necessary. So because we were on land specifically, and everyone was out and about in their own little cohorts, nobody even asked for it. It worked out perfect that we didn't need it. However, as you guys may know this uh, on Alma, they have a private restaurant, Chef's Table. I blocked off the first night because we had a group of 27 and we fit perfectly in the private restaurant and, and Alma was more than happy to let me own it the first night. And that worked like a charm. That worked, that was perfect because I got to stand up and you know, I'm not too shy about making speeches. So I made a couple of speeches and welcomed everybody, went around to the tables, introduced some people, and that was perfect. Okay, so I did that. And actually, there was one more private event I want to tell you about was that uh, in Strasbourg, which, by the way, it's a great city. I loved, we loved Strasbourg. And yes, we walked all the way up to the tippy top of that cathedral. If you think I remember the name of the cathedral, you're crazy. I can look it up if you want to know, but we did walk up. In any case, we timed out the lunch right after the walking tour that everybody took. It was the main walking tour and of course there was the, uh, the, the light walker and then there were the active walker. It didn't matter. All the, they all ended at the same time and then everyone had an hour just to walk around because it's a great, who's been to Strasbourg? It's beautiful. Loved it. And right around the corner from the post office, right, you guys know the post office, is Le Gruber. The lunch was set up, ready to go. People sat down. It's a beautiful, quaint, awesome restaurant. And uh, lunch was done and set, and, and they loved it. People were like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And I actually picked up the, the bar bill, too. It was worth it. I built it all in. I knew I was going to do it, and, and everyone came up, you know, and it was a real highlight. And I covered my costs. Trust me. I covered my costs. But it was a very special event because the only way to have lunch that day was to go by bus, motor coach, back to the ship. So you have to be very scientific when you plan private events. The first one was unnecessary because everyone was scattered. The chef's table, perfect. We're all together. Easy. Okay, the next one, the private lunch, perfect because everyone needed to eat. And to go back to the ship was a schlep, so you might as well stay. stay. All right, let me take a break here. Let me take a breather. And let me see if we have any comments or questions because I want this to be interactive. And by the way... <clears throat> If you want your microphone on, tell me. If it's easier, for those of you new boot campers, welcome. If you want me to turn your mic on, I am pleased to do that. And then I'll shut it right off if you want. But also, if you have a success story or a challenge to share, be in the spotlight today. Let's do it. Uh, Clavia, who I got to meet for the first time. Yay! We actually hugged, and there's a great picture you posted on Facebook. Thank you. Uh, my fifth grade class did a tour and lunch on the SS Norway in 1983. Oh, my goodness. See, everyone's got an SS Norway story, and I certainly do. 
you know, many stories. I actually sailed her a bunch of times. Thanks for sharing and wonderful meeting you. Jean Ann says, grateful, oh, grateful for you too, Stuart. Thanks. That was very sweet, Jean Ann. It's very nice. Thank you. Ann said, how did you send up the bank account for the ship charter? Uh, well, bank account, I'm not exactly sure what you are referring to, but here's what I did with my, with my, so back, my bank, just so I keep the money separate. Because, uh, you know, whatever bank you use, you, you can have 50 different accounts. They don't care. It's just a name and the money's in the same place. So I set up, so I made sure I kept all the funds in a separate account. So that was at my end. But how did I take payment? Maybe, maybe that's what you're referring to. I'm not sure. But I used PayPal. I've had this PayPal account for many, 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 many years. And I know, I know what you're saying. Oh, but PayPal sometimes doesn't let you. They prohibit, they restrict this kind of stuff. Well, Listen, I'm going to be, I'm honest with you. I'm nothing if not honest because, you know, I have a very, very good track record with PayPal. On occasion, there's a boot camper who doesn't realize that SLC, SLC ETC on their statement is me. So I get a, a you know, not a chargeback, but a question. We fix it. Everything is good. And I have a great track record. So there were never any issues. I was able to use PayPal. Uh, yeah, it cost me 3.5% or more, but that's the cost of doing business, friends. I had the option of using AMA. I could have had all payments go through AMA, but they charge 3.5% or 4%. I forget what it is. So even if you don't have a PayPal or Square or whatever uh, or your own merchant account, in a charter situation, they will usually let you use it, but of course they're going to charge a merchant fee. Okay, so Ann, tell me if that answered your question. Lena says, according to an insurance agent I spoke to two weeks ago, you can include insurance as long as you don't charge for it. But if you work with the net pricing, you add the cost to your net. No one can get a refund if they opt out of the insurance because it, was, it will, at this point, have no value. This is information from Berkshire Hathaway. Now, that's slightly different from the travel insurer because I, I questioned them at, ad nauseum about this because I wanted to be able to understand it so when I come and talk about it. So this is interesting. I want to read it again. I want to read it again. According, according to Berkshire Hathaway, you can include insurance as long as you don't charge for it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, but if you work with net prices, you add the cost. That's right. Okay, so uh, right. So uh, you, you have to blend it in. It can't show as a separate line item. So what you can say is, that you, that, okay, so Lena, let me make sure I'm, I'm, I'm restating this correctly and understanding what you're saying, is that I could have, for my river cruise, I could have said, I will pay for your, your insurance. The price you will be paying, uh, and I, I know the, 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 I think the danger word though is include, but, but I think he said I could use the word prepay. I will prepay your travel insurance. I will prepay your travel insurance. So it's also the words that you used, keep in mind. Tell me if that's right. And and then of course you're gonna get net pricing, you're gonna you're gonna bundle in, but they can't get a refund if they opt out because there's no number in it. You're not giving them any kind of a breakout. Now this is this is you know, this is legalese stuff here. We gotta make sure we're right. But Lena, thanks for sharing that because uh, yes. So with the twist here, you're, you're right. And, and again, I, I think that you can't use the word include, but that you're, you're, it's prepaid because there are some legal legal issues with the words too. And Lena said, do you need a merchant account when you do a big group like what you did? So there you go. I already answered that. No, you don't. Like I said, I used PayPal for it and everything worked out beautifully, just beautifully. Okay. Uh, Trilisky, hey. Welcome to Liskey. Good morning. Strasbourg is beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I loved it. There were certain cities I would go back to in a heartbeat. And and oh, let me just break off for a second here and just tell you about Zurich and Lucerne. If if you've been there, then you probably agree with me. Uh, the, the great cities, especially Lucerne, which is you know certainly more of a resort town, but they're expensive cities. So you know you know just prepare your guests that they're expensive cities to eat in because of course breakfasts. Are included at the hotel, which are wonderful, abundant, perfect. But to have lunch and dinner, they're not cheap. It is what it is. It's like a New York City or whatever. It's a big city, especially Lucerne, a resort city. Uh, and and what I want to tell you is that what we've ended up finding uh, 
in, in Zurich, and, and I'm happy to go into more detail one-on-one -on -one or on Facebook if anybody needs this information. I don't want to drill down too deep in any one area in case you don't need this information, but uh, we found, and I know, don't laugh, I don't know if anybody here, we, I'm not 100% uh, uh, vegetarian, so I don't call myself vegetarian, but I eat mostly uh, vegetable matter. And I'm very happy with it. Of course, last night I made a roast chicken. That was the most amazing roast chicken I've ever made. So you know, and, and so I, uh, I'm mostly fish. You know, this kind of stuff. But you know, I. So I'm not a vegetarian, but I, I, I favor that. And I could go vegetarian if I wanted to, but I don't. I don't need to. Uh, we found in Zurich two vegetarian places. One of them, out the door, three levels. It's a buffet. Uh, if that's what you choose or off the menu, it's called the Hittle House, H-I-T-L, the Hittle House. And, and, and it was recommended by locals. That's where they go. See, I love asking where do you go to eat, right? Don't you? And then we found another one that was right around the corner from the hotel that was, that was a buffet. And it was phenomenal. Folks, I know you're laughing, vegetarian, what are you, nuts in my granola head? Let me tell you something. If you've never tried a restaurant like that, the food is phenomenal. It is superb. It is supreme. It is awesome. So I'm just letting you know. And then, and oh, I want to show you a picture here because when, we're, when we were in Lucerne, food was very expensive. So I'm going to give you two examples of food. Uh, that that was overpriced and not worth it. And one restaurant we found that was more in the city, outside the resort area. If you cross over the river, if you walk around the downtown area of Lucerne, so it was more of a local joint that we we loved. We'd go back to any time. So let me just go to see if I can go to the next slide to see if it works. Uh, yeah, this is the 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 Verst House Gallicker, the Verst House Gallicker. This is in Lucerne. Let me tell you something, friends. If you have anybody going to Lucerne, you got to go eat here. It's a local joint. We ended up sitting next to a couple uh, who live there. They love it, and and they had they they uh, they live temporarily in California for business. They just had a baby, six months old. They came back home to Lucerne to share the baby with their family, and it was uh, listen to me. It was their first night out at home in Lucerne. Guess where they went? to Verst House Gallagher, and we sat next to them, and it was really a beautiful experience because the owner, watch the next slide, you see that, that the big guy in the purple in the middle? The owner walks around the restaurant, welcome everybody, and, and once he saw we were, well, he could tell we were tourists, you know, because we had all cameras. Uh, but, but he talked to us, he, and then when, when the meal was over, he took us into a back room and he showed us that his family, he has some family in Pennsylvania, they own a, a dairy farm, and he's a fifth generation owner of that restaurant. It was extraordinary. So I'm just letting you know that there are wonderful local options. But also then we went to one, now listen carefully, in Lucerne, that was highly recommended on TripAdvisor, and other people recommended it too. And you may have not know it because it's called the Old Swiss House. And I heard about it, and I didn't check it online to see what the menu was like. Well, let me tell you something, friends. I had sticker shock. Sticker shock. It was, the pricing was so insanely high. Okay? It was a limited menu. And what they're known for is their schnitzel with, you know, the veal. They pound it out like, you know, six million days. They just pound it, pound it, so it's like so thin, you, you know. And they prepare it for your table side in literally this much butter, pounds of butter, literally. It's, of course, it's delicious. I mean, what, what, you can cook cardboard in butter, and it's going to taste delicious. My point is I felt really bad that I had recommended it to my mom and her group of friends and my group of friends. Everyone had a wonderful time, but, man, it was sticker shock. We paid for three meals in that one meal, so I'm just saying, you know, just don't trust TripAdvisor right away. Go look at the menus, too. And for some folks, they're okay dropping that kind of bomb for dinner. You know, and if it was an out the door meal, I would have been okay dropping that bomb for dinner too. But you know what? It wasn't that awesome. I mean, it only brought us one tray of bread. All right, let me see if we got any more comments, questions, because there's a couple of things I want to share with you. Uh, the 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 biggest surprises to my guests. I'm going to share with you big surprises to my guests. I think you're going to enjoy that. Uh, and said, um, yes, I had heard from other agents that they had problems with PayPal if someone made a large payment. You also need to have your own seller of travel license set up since you're collecting the money, right? No, I did not need a seller of travel's license in Tennessee. 
uh, and with and uh, I I just did not. Uh, so it all worked out. Now I did just so you know. How did I uh, work through a an insurance company, travel insured? I did make a partnership with a good friend of mine, uh, Sherry Cruise Maven. Sherry, you guys know Sherry. Uh, she has an agency, so so we did have a partnership. She came. She escorted with me as well, and she had some of her friends come as well. And so, yes, there's no doubt. I am not a certified, full-fledged, registered travel agent. I'm not. But just so you know, with any cruise line, any company, anybody can do a partial ship charter. Just so you know, because that's money up front. You're paying for it, whether you, own, you know, whether you. It's just so you know. So, um, I did this by the books, totally legal. But with the insurance stuff. Uh, I needed to use uh, an agent, and also that the insurance could be sold to uh, all had seller of travel in all of these states. And because Sher Sherry is a member of a consortium that gives her uh, licenses for all, because I guess from California as well, right? Right. So I covered myself. Everything was cool. It all worked out. I hope that makes sense, Ann. And you're right on the money. Uh, Lena said I was not told. I was not told you could not use the word included, but we'll check. Yes, Lena, let's check on that because, you know, that's definitely what I heard loud and clear about using the word included. You can't say that, but with it, but prepaid, there was a plan word you could use. Talisky says, correct on what you're saying, many visits when lived in Europe. Um, and I think you were, uh, I don't remember what you're talking about, Talisky. Um, Oh, thank you for sharing your experience and your use of the tools you teach us. You're very welcome. And I'm telling you the honest to goodness truth, I used everything. So but just so you know, when I went, not only did I have in my pocket at all times a list of all guests, their stateroom numbers and cell phones, even though some of them, of course, didn't bring cell phones. Some of them did. Some of them did. And some of them hadn't shut off the cell phone data properly, so I probably saved them thousands of dollars. Okay, uh, um, but I had a list of of all everyone who bought the the insurance as well with the insurance numbers. Gosh forbid! And you guys also know. Well, you knew boot campers didn't know it, but I sent out a an optional survey asking about health. What what do we need? This will be kept highly confidential. What health issues? What medications? What conditions should we know about in case of the God forbid? Because because if there's an issue, if somebody has an allergy to a food or has a fall and they're allergic to something, they can't take this. They're on certain medications. Wouldn't it be helpful that somebody knows? Because their family's not there to say, oh, don't give them this bed. You know, they're going to have a reaction to it. Thankfully, we didn't have to use that information. I didn't have to use the insurance information. I didn't have to use my little printout. Of, uh, but I, as a group leader, I was armed and ready for everything. I was armed and ready for everything. Okay, Aladana says you do need your own solo tra travel in, in, with PayPal and Square. Well, uh, actually, to be honest with you, the clients uh, who I had in California they paid me by check, uh, so I didn't even involve PayPal. So there you go. But it's important. I'm going to read it again. You do need your own solo travel in California with PayPal and Square. And just so you know, I'm usually not a rule follower. That's just me. But when it comes to legally stuff and monies, I'm a rule follower. So I think I played by. I think I played it all by the book. Ann said yes. It answered. Uh, oh, Taliski said when you were talking about Lucerne. Yep, that it's expensive and so forth. Uh, did you have a goodie bag or a gift bag to the people in your group? If so, what was in it? Yeah, that's a great question, Molly. You know, I I did not. And it's something I really thought of doing, wanted to do. In fact, Kimberly and I had we had a notebook of all these wonderful plans that we were gonna, you know, collect little, we were gonna ask them to write on little pieces of paper what their big aha moment was of the day. What was the most beautiful thing you saw that you ate, that you did, and we were gonna make a little a scrapbook, a notebook of stuff. And you know what? We did what we did. We we ended up not doing that. And and it turned out to be okay. Would it have elevated a notch, perhaps? Uh, if we had given a goodie bag or gift bag, would it have elevated a notch? Perhaps. I didn't do it. One of the reasons why, Molly, great question, everybody, is that, um, you know, I, I knew what a, what a river cruise was like, and I think all the brands do this. They include everything. And, and I added in a bunch of extras, and I couldn't for the life of me think of what else I could possibly, who, I mean, who needs a bottle of wine in the stateroom? Well, it's all you can drink, wine and beer with lunch and dinner, you know? 
you know, I did get a nice bottle of wine from Christine and Rudy. I'm friends with Christine. That's why I'm such a big Alma fan, not because of her and Rudy, but because I love the product too. But that helps to have a relationship with them, and they're so approachable, especially Christine. She's out and about. She's everywhere. She, she loves us. She really does. Um, but, but I didn't. So here's what I'm doing as a follow-up. Uh, I am setting up a Flickr. You guys know Flickr? It's a free uh, way to share photos and video because some of us took a lot of great pictures, and my mission was to be present and not take too many pictures. I did buy a brand-new camera for this trip, which I loved. But I took a lot of pictures of other people, of everybody else. My mom with her friends, my friends with each other. You know, people, when people aren't, those are the best pictures, right? When they're not standing there smiling, when it's you just snap away. Now, so I'm going to post, and, and I told my friends, hey, listen, do me a favor. I'm going to take pictures of you, take pictures of me. <laughs> so that, you know, so there's no selfies and stuff. So that, that's what I'm going to do uh, as the parting gift, if you will. Um, you know, the lunch that I threw that I paid for, that wasn't cheap. I also picked up the bar bill for the, for that, and uh, I don't know. So in this case, I didn't. So it's not a necessity or requirement, but the key is: will it serve an important pur purpose? As they say, Molly, is the juice worth the squeeze? Well, you know, you you, you want to do it out of the goodness of your heart, but also, what what can you provide that will help elevate the experience? You know, perhaps uh, in my case, what could I have given everybody? Um, I was going to say a bottle of water, which I'll tell you why in a second, but you know, the ship gives you all the water you need on excursions. There's bottled water on the motor coaches, which were beautiful, like brand new, by the way. And when your guests ask you, this is on AMA, the bathrooms on the motor coaches, and always you want to check this. Don't take it from me. There are, but they're for emergency use because we had some, uh, you know, between my wife and her friends and my mom, whatever. There was a lot of peeing going on. <laughs> Luckily, there was the emergency bathroom on the bus. Uh, now, I keep saying I'm going to go back to something to tell you, and I can't never remember what I was going to go back to tell you, but here we go. Now, I'm, I'm going to dive into this right now. Hang on. I'm going to tell you some of the biggest surprises that, that my guests, that my friends and family had that I wish I had stressed more before they went on the river cruise, okay? Number one, restaurants. And I don't want to say in all of Europe, but I'm just going to say where we were. In Switzerland, in Germany, in France, in Amsterdam, restaurants include the service charge. They see there was a huge issue and confusion, especially among our older guests, because we're all used to paying a tip. Well, they include it there. And what they recommend you do, right, right, is just round it up. Or if it was extraordinary service, of course you could leave more. Who's going to say no to that? But my, my mom with her friends, one of the restaurants they went to in Lucerne, no, it was Zurich. It was, no, it was Lucerne, sorry. They asked the question, and guess what? They lied. They said, no, it does not. And so they left more money. And when they later, when we were talking about it, and one of the tour guides was Monica, our cruise manager was present. She was awesome. She said, she said, then they were dishonest with you because the service is included. It's very different from us here. So just so you know, folks, and make sure you check on this, the the countries you're going to visit, right? So tell me, you, are you on the same page as me? Do you you get this? Do you understand it? Because it's very unnatural for us to walk out, sign in the credit card bill, and not leave a tip. Rounding up is fine. Leaving and, and and frankly, for our private lunch, um, we had two uh, waitresses and they were awesome. And I gave them each ten ten euro. Okay, and they were so elated. But what I should have done was given them it up front, so that it would have given even better service. Perhaps I'm I'm kidding, but sometimes that's what you do. You give it up front, right? You guys know this trick. Give it up front. Put it in their hands. Say, listen, I'm here for the week. I'm here for the night. Make sure you take good care of us. Don't give it after. All right, the second thing, and I'm going to read to you if you guys had any questions or comments about this because that's really important. You don't want your guests to get hosed. Number two, the water in the restaurants. Oh, my goodness. 
you know, here we are in the mo uh, seeing castles, eating amazing foods, seeing different cultures having the most, but everyone was focused on, I can't believe they're charging me for the water in the restaurant, right? Right? You know what I'm talking about? And it's very difficult for us to get used to because here in the United States of America, boom, 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 we get disappointed if our water glass isn't at the tippy top, right? It's a gimme. It's an assumption. It's a requirement. It's an expectation there. Oh, no. You get your beer like that because they'll just keep pouring your beer. Not free. They'll keep charging. But my point is you pay for water. And one place said, yeah, if you want to get your own water, it's over there. <laughs> they pointed to a tap, a sink. We can go get our own water. That's just the culture. But especially my mom, man, it took her so long to get to understand. And still to this day, she just, she just thinks it's wrong. It's bad. And I agree. But that's the culture, right? It's different. We just have to accept it. So those are, I just want to put those two big things. Oh, yeah, of course. And if you need to use a toilet out and about, you pay. So, and I knew that going up because when I was on my honeymoon cruise, uh, I made sure I had changed. So the first thing you do when you get on board that ship, listen, everybody, is when you have your euros or your francs, uh, is go to the front desk on the cruise ship because they'll change the money. Is get smaller bills, get dollar or two do two two euro, two franc, whatever denomination, so you could do tips. This is something very important. I'm glad it just popped into my head. Let me just write this down because I'm going to make a list and I'm going to publish it for you guys. I promise. I'm going to share all of it when it comes to the you know the tips for the tour guides, this kind of stuff. You you need pocket money. Make sure everyone gets on that ship right away, goes to the bank, and changes over, gets get smaller bills so you can give one euro or one franc to the to the bus driver, which is typical, and two per person, per person, two francs or two euro, two dollars, whatever, for the, your 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 uh, tour guide, right? That's pretty much the standard. And it's a bummer if you don't have that change because it's very uncomfortable. So I would ask my friends, say, do me a favor, lay out for me. I'll pay you back when I forgot to get change. And you need coins for the toilets. You need coins for the toilets. Okay. By the way, another thing. See, this is free flow. One of the best things I did, and Molly, you were talking about gift bags, but one of the best gifts I did was I collected the gratuities. I built it in, and I prepaid it. I prepaid the shipboard gratuities. You can't prepay gratuities on land. You can't prepay gratuities for the tour guides, but you can prepay gratuities for the ship. So this way, there's no stress at the end. There's no issues at the end. Um, you know, uh, it, and people came with a confirm with me. I said it's already done. I said, but if somebody give you outstanding, over the top service, you give them a little extra. And I did, and I know plenty of my group did too. Because some of us bought bought wine in the in these in these port cities, these you know whether it's um what was Rudersheim or a Basel, whatever they brought you know Rieslings because wine is really cheap there, right? Really inexpensive, and we had it in the lounge. And they, guess what? On the big ships, good luck trying to bring a bottle of booze on the ship, right? Good luck bringing a six pack of beer. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do it, but they have rules. Corkage fees, this kind of stuff. On board the Amor Christina, no problem. No problem. They'll open it. They give you the glasses, but we would leave. We would thank them. We would leave some money on the table to thank them for coming and cleaning up our mess and using their glasses because that was a, a nice thing to do. So including the prepaid gratuities was, was a great move. Let's see what else we got here. Deborah says, why not get credit cards for your clients to pay for their cruise? Then you do not have to deal with PayPal. Uh, why not get credit cards for your clients to pay for their cruise, then you do not have to deal with PayPal. Deborah, I'm not sure what you're asking here. Help me, help me, help me get credit cards for to give them credit cards or become a merchant account. I didn't want to become a merchant account. I had a merchant account for years because I was the founder of resortforday.com. So I had a merchant account. Very expensive. Monthly fees. Is that what you're talking about? Help me, help me, help me. Uh, Elaine says, late to the webinar because of a client call. Good. Take the client call. Please, would you provide me with a replay? Absolutely. I record all of these, Elaine. No problem. Welcome. Molly says, when I've done groups before, sometimes we do custom luggage tags, a tote bag with the group logo, hand sanitizer, chapstick, pen and notepad. Can be fun to help and identify your group. Bingo, Molly. Thank you for sharing. Listen, everybody, this is great stuff because you can order it in bulk or you can go a Vista print and order it. Ones, twos, threes, it's cheap. Um, 
But uh, the luggage tag, in this case, AMA provided it. But in some, some cases, they don't. So give them a lug. People always love that. A tote bag with the group logo. Easy peasy. It's the bag you take when you're out and about and you're shopping. The hand sanitizer, that's great. Everybody uses that. Everybody wants it. Great idea. Inexpensive. Chapstick, you better believe it. We needed it because some days were windy. It was chilly the first couple days. Absolutely. Uh, a pen and a notepad. I love it. That's great stuff. Molly, thank you for sharing. That's great stuff to put in a gift basket, um, and and have and have it serve purpose, have it be relevant, and you know so it's also functional. Uh, Han said, uh, "I'd like giving the tips up front." Yes, I agree with you, Hans. Giving tips up front. All right, guys, go ahead. We have ten minutes left. If you have questions, issue anecdotes, and I'm not sure we're going to get to the other things. Do you want me to continue with the river cruise notes here? Is this helpful? The group notes here. Um, let me see here. Let me go down the list. Hold on, hold on. Welcome, cocktail party. The group for um, um, the 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 seating. I was concerned too how the seating was going to work. You know, for the breakfast, lunches, and dinners. But you know what? I let it go. Walked in, and we sat with who we sat with. Unless you feel you need need to have assigned tables, it just works out. On the Ama ships, there are these two sort of not private, but they are private little dining areas that they do not reserve in advance. That and our group, my with well, my friends, we fit perfectly in it. And if you just go down, put a sport jacket on the back of the chair, uh, then you have you have the room. By the way, in terms of uh, you know, if you have people these days, everyone's got a gluten issue, a lactose issue, a this issue, a that issue, you know, and me too, right? I'm lactose intolerant, and and I can't digest. I don't do beef. I can do pork, but I can't do red meat. Not a good situation. As as I age, I understand and read my body, and I know what makes me feel good and doesn't make me feel good. Glutens all day long. Give me the glutens. No problem. Issue. Good stuff. Full of amino acids. I have no problem digesting glutens. But man, when I turned, told my waiter on the ship, even though sometimes you have different waiters based on where you sit, they go back and say, I will consult with the chef. I'll tell, come back and tell you what's good, what you can have. They were very, so I know in this day and age where everyone is so diet conscious, whether it's by choice or by medical necessity, you know, tell everybody, don't worry. They'll cater to you. They'll cater to you. They always had gluten-free breads out too, you know, and, and of course, you know, if somebody has celiac disease, my, my sister-in-law does, that's serious. It's not just... Uh, uh, Oh, I don't want to have glutens. It's I can't because if I do, I'm going to get really ill. You know that's something you definitely want to consult the cruise line about to see if they because you know guys know this. Somebody celiac these, even if that flour is in the air and there's a, just a little bit of it, uh, it can make them very sick. So what I'm saying here is not the gospel. I'm just giving you some tips and advice, and I was pleased with the way they helped that. Deborah says they use the credit card number to pay for deposit on the cruise and excursions. I see what you're saying. So, in some cases, use their credit card um, to uh, to uh, g give it to the cruise line to collect uh, to pay for deposit on the cruise. So you could you can take different form of payments in different ways. You could do that too to mix it up. I think that's what you're saying, Deborah. I hope I captured it right, and I appreciate that. Hey, Carol's here. Carol's working on some good stuff. Very proud of you, Carol. We we were corresponding. Sorry I couldn't get to you any sooner because I was in transit. Um, uh, yes, I will put the River Cruise notes together. Carol's working on some very exciting stuff, and she's following the, the Pitch Perfect. If you, who here has not run through the Pitch Perfect modules? Because if you have not, you're missing out on something I think really good. And again, you know my goal in boot camp, friends. I'm going to say it again. My goal in boot camp, I don't care if you've been in business 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. Three goals. Number one, validate stuff you're already doing. Number two, Remind you of stuff you may have forgotten. And number three, teach you brand new stuff you never thought of. That's the value I bring to group boot camp here. So please watch Pitch Perfect if you haven't. And if you haven't watched Group Lord Secrets, go do it. It will change your life. Karen says, what did you find most improved on Alma from your last river cruise? What did I find most improved from the last river cruise? Karen is asking. That's a great question because... If you ask me, the last one was was perfect. I, uh, uh, what did I find improved? Uh, I don't know. I I don't not sure what I could tell you. I did like the bicycles. I'm just what pops into my head quick. Uh, the bikes were uh, 
were just just kind of a neater design, more of a, a, a strolling type bike. I forget what you call them. And I think uh, they had more of a you know small size bikes too, because my, my wife is short, and we, a couple of us were on the trip were short, so there were bikes there. Um, what else did I find improved? I really liked because the last ship we were on had uh, an itty bitty uh, itty bitty like one person, two person hot tub on top. You really couldn't use it, you know. Um, this had a pool, a heated pool with a bar. Now, the bartender wasn't there, but he offered to come to work the bar. That was super cool. So the hardware had a couple of interesting upgrades. The bikes, like I said, the, the heated pool, which we went in when it was freezing cold outside. Of course you knew I would do that. Um, uh, but but otherwise, they just it was perfect. I, I don't know. And, and oh, let me just say this. You know, you, you look at a river cruise and, you know, they have three decks pretty much. Of course, the lowest deck uh, doesn't have full windows. They just have a small, small windows, right? Um, and, and, of course, the other two decks, you have usually full windows. And I'm a sort of they invented this double window French balcony thing. Uh, and I took a category AA for myself and for Kimberly, and a couple of us did, and others were in BBs and ABs and BAs and this kind of stuff. And when you look at them, you're like, you know, what's the difference between up one higher, one a little lower, one a little further down the ship? One, you know, what I can tell you is that, um, you know, in terms of being up here or down here, um, it's the view. To me, that's really more of the view. Uh, but it definitely in terms of size, like my mom came in hours, she goes, oh, you have more space here. I wish I had that space. So, you know, if space inside a stateroom is important to people, you can get the premium pricing for that, you know, um, because there is more space. There was, an, there was another chair you could sit on to, to drop your clothes on, to pro drop your junk on or to sit down and to hang out. So, it's, you know, the, the, you, the, the space is palpable. Some people, they don't care. They don't care. But we went for it. You know, we went for the AA, which is one under a suite, and it was it was perfect. It was awesome, and we did sit on the balcony because I did send out postcards. Another thing, write down, check if you're not doing business with Alma that your River Cruise Company does this, but Alma will give you free postcards, and they will post them. They'll mail them to anybody around the world free. So I probably mailed about 30 postcards to friends and family who could not come, and also to business associates business associates because remember I'm in the speaking business and I need to stay in touch and I need to follow up and say hey I'm thinking of you so I did hey thinking of you wish you were here greetings from the Rhine that's what I wrote thinking of you wishing you were here greetings from the Rhine and I send it to back to Memphis to a lot of business associates and to clients around the country and they post them free hope that helps what else we got here Deborah said by the way I'm is wonderful take the Bordeaux trip match the wine to what you were eating not house wine and meals you know that's a trip we are looking at actually Deborah uh, you know while I would do the Danube again in a heartbeat because I love Prague and Vienna and Budapest. Love it, love it, love it. It's an awesome itinerary. Um, we we're thinking of, of doing that as well. And I like the wine pairing opportunity, Deborah. Thank you. Um, let's say, uh, Deborah said on River Cruise, if you were on the first deck with the window, the window can be blocked when docked and cause the cabin to be really docked. Yeah, no doubt. And I got to tell you something, friends. That's one of the weirdest things about River Cruise, right? when you wake up and you see the other river crews literally right there like you could reach out and shake hands with the person on the other ship it's kind of weird so you got to sleep because you don't know when you wake up if you're going to be in a port right but even on the second deck Deborah even if you're on that higher deck it's still right there now you're a little higher up so maybe you're, you're you can see a little bit of their top deck and all but kind of the same difference but um but lower down, you're definitely blocked in and it's darker. I totally agree with you. Those are good observations. All right, we've got one minute left. This was awesome. I hope you found this helpful. And I didn't mean to own it and take it over, but I have so much more to share with you too. I really do. Don't let people take a, an active walking tour if they're not active. The cruise is not the time to achieve, um, to try to win gold medals in the Olympics because we had a couple people who took active tours we did the philosopher's hike and in the philosopher's hike where was it and i don't remember we'll get back to it uh the philosopher's path in heidelberg and a couple of well i didn't think they were gonna make it don't kid yourself all right i'll leave you with that one listen post on facebook i'll post on facebook let me get your feedback let me get your questions because i i there's i don't think there's any better biz, business to be in in river than uh groups and i also think that river cruising what a huge opportunity for growth 
opportunity, satisfaction, and profitability to grow your business.